Professor Diaz here, and in this video I want to talk about price ceilings, price floors, and dead weight loss. A price ceiling is when the government sets a price that, uh, that the market cannot rise above, okay? So price ceiling, so normally if, if this is our market, right, um, normally the equilibrium would be right here at about $6. Um, if the government sets a price ceiling, they're going to say, for this market, we're not going to allow the price of this good or service to rise above, let's say, hypothetically, $4. Okay, let me change colors here and say, here's a price ceiling. So, um, the, the price of this good or service is not going to rise above $4. Now, the price, the, the price wants to go and wants to tend towards equilibrium, right, which is at this point, but it can't rise up above it because it hits this price ceiling, right? This is why it's called a price ceiling. It's when the government intervenes and, and fixes the market to say the price wants to go up to here, but it can't because it gets stuck at the ceiling, right? Um, when the government imposes price ceilings, this does something bad to the market, right? Think about it for a minute. We've got demand, whoops, we've got demand way over here at this quantity. We've got supply way back here at this quantity. So what's going to happen is the gap between these two points is a shortage, right? And this shortage is caused because this price is so low, it price wants to go up, but it can't because it hits the ceiling. Therefore, too many people want to buy this product and not enough people want to sell it, right? So this is why we would say generally, um, the government intervening in free markets is bad. We want the markets to be free so prices can set themselves. Now, the other side of this is what we call a uh, price floor. And this is where the government says you can't drop prices any lower, right? So normally, again, the equilibrium price here would be six. Um, but if let's say the government said, you know what? We don't want people to charge any less than eight dollars for this good or service, okay? This is a price floor because the price wants to drop to here but it can't because of the floor. So it just falls to the floor and can't get any lower. This also creates a problem because now at this price, all these people want to supply this good or service, but only this amount of people are, are demanding this good or service, right? And so the gap between these two points here and here, we call a surplus. And this is the worst type of surplus because we have all these suppliers, but not that many people wanting to buy it. And normally that would just mean the, the sellers lower the price until there's enough buyers, but we can't because of this price floor keeping the whole thing from falling. So the government generally doesn't set um, price floors or price ceilings. Most economists and uh, politicians and, and governments believe that a free market is the most efficient way to operate and that as you interfere with the market, um, bad things happen. Now let's look though for a minute at uh, some of these situations. If you did uh, have a price floor, let's go back to the price floor we had at eight. If we had a price floor, um, what would happen is that only this quantity here of products would be sold, okay? Only that quantity of products would be sold because all these demanders would only buy this product if the price was less than this, right? So all these transactions are not going to happen. So this ends up being this ends up being the quantity sold. So let's go ahead and call that three for simplicity of example and say this comes down to three. So that ends up being the transactions that actually happen. What ends up happening for consumer and producer surplus, and if you didn't watch my videos, uh, watch the last two videos on consumer and producer surplus, but watch what happens to consumer and producer surplus. Starting with consumer surplus, let's switch this one back to blue. Remember, these points on this line represent actual people that would buy at these various prices. And so the whole area of this triangle 
represents consumer surplus. So even though the price is jacked up above market equilibrium, there are even still people up here that would have paid more than even the price floor is set at, right? Um, but look what happens to consumer surplus. I'm sorry, producer surplus. Producer surplus goes up to this area because now you have all these people that would have been willing to sell down here for this price, but they get to sell up here at this price. And so this whole area becomes producer surplus. So you can see producer surplus actually got bigger and consumer surplus actually got smaller. But, but notice the amount that producer surplus got bigger is not as much as consumer surplus got smaller. And this is because this whole area of this triangle used to be total surplus. But now this triangle represents transactions that never happened, right? Efficiency in the market that's gone. Because if you didn't have this price floor, this person right here would have been more than happy to buy a product from this person right here. And these two people would have both been happy because they could have sold at say this price and there would have been some, some uh, producers or consumer surplus here and some producer surplus here. But none of this transaction can happen, right? In fact, none of the transactions in that triangle can happen. So what do we call this whole space? This whole space where no transactions are happening, we call dead weight, loss. And this is why um, um, price ceilings, which are down here, and price floors, which are up here, are, are bad things, is because they create this dead weight loss where the market can't operate efficiently. Okay, there's one more concept I want to cover in this video, and that's the idea of an effective and ineffective price ceiling or price floor. The price floor we have here would be considered effective, right? Why is it effective? Because the price wants to come down to this point down here at the equilibrium, but it can't because it hits the floor. What if we set the price floor? What if we set a price floor here? What if we set a price floor here? Said, okay, no matter what, prices is not coming below $4. Is this an effective price floor? The answer is no, it's not effective because price is only going to fall to equilibrium here, right? So price doesn't want to fall lower than that, right? So this would be an ineffective price floor. Likewise, a price ceiling that would be ineffective would be one up here because price only wants to rise to the equilibrium, right? It doesn't want to rise up here. So this would be an ineffective price, uh, price ceiling, right? For a price ceiling to be effective, it needs to be under equilibrium. For a price floor to be effective, it needs to be over equilibrium. Um, that's all for this video. As always, if you have questions, please let me know.